You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com, that is B-A-R-K, the letter N, W-A-G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at BarkinWag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Reek. Today we're talking to Maddie Angevine, professional dog trainer with Gentle Pets. Thanks for being back on the podcast, Maddie. Of course. Good to be here. So I had a listener after uh, you were on the last podcast email and ask, what do you do if you're going to walk your dog lunges at uh, people walking by? What are tips that you can uh, give this dog owner? Ooh, that's a great question. And honestly, it happens more often than not. Um, you, you are not alone. It's a question we get all the time, um, even at our facility. I, I tend to teach my dog a t- couple different things to kind of be able to manage them, um, but still not necessarily take them out of that situation unless I really have to. Um, there's, there's two, you know, there's training moments and then there's management moments. And management moments are... I'm not going to be able to handle this. I just need to get out of Dodge before we do any more damage, either to what my dog's reaction was or to scaring this poor helpless person down the street. I've got a big old German Shepherd. He's about 100 to 110 pounds, depending on if he's pooped or not in the morning. And if he decides to lunge at somebody or even just stand farther forward and prickle his back, he looks really intimidating. So there are some really easy ways to kind of teach your dog that instead of doing that, it's not exactly what we're looking for when we're on that leash. The first tip that I have for anybody that's dealing with a dog that lunges is what you're working on now is desensitization. So desensitization is going to be, instead of teaching your dog, whether it's an aggressive thing or just an, I wanna go say hi, I wanna teach Mm -hmm. my dog that on leash, the goal is attention on me right? So I actually start this with my dogs without a leash, where I just kind of reward them for being on the right side of my body. And actually, when I say right side, I mean correct side, and I personally do the left. Um, not that it really matters. You can absolutely choose your own. But I want okay. to teach my dog that it, it pays to be on the left side of my body. Then I might clip on the leash and go outside and do a lot of, ooh, look, you're getting treats on the left side of my body, outside on leash as well. But maybe I just keep that in my yard to start with so that it's not incredibly distracting. Then I might start by doing like a couple, you know, feet down the driveway or down the sidewalk and just kind of giving them rewards every time that I look down and they're in that right position. That is something that takes a really long time. Leash walking is something that people struggle with a ton. But again, I just want to be rewarding them and paying them for the job that they're doing, which is walking nicely by my side, right? The other one that I like to teach my dogs is a turn cue. So it means if we're walking one way and I say turn, everybody's going to move 180 degrees around and just walk the other direction. 
So I can be walking with my two Huskies and my German Shepherd, we're going in one direction. I say, turn, in a really kind of excited, happy voice. And my dogs are like, oh my God, this is such a fun game. Because every time they turn with me, then everybody gets a bunch of treats. So you can okay. do that as you're walking up, you see another person in the distance. If your dog starts doing something funny, but you've practiced something like a turn, it's so much more rewarding for them to come with you rather than to go see those other people. Okay. Okay. So really you need to start in your backyard and then even when you're out actually walking with a leash, uh, you should have treats. Oh, always. I always have treats because my, and not that my dogs always need treats. My two oldest are seven and six. If I don't have treats on a walk, they're going to be just fine. But if I want to create a really kind of dog with wealth, to, we call it putting pennies in a piggy bank. So every time I give my dog a treat, I'm giving them payment for doing what I've asked them to do. If I stop giving my dog treats, it would be like I walked into work one day and they were like, hey, Maddie, you're, you know, you got the hang of this now, right? You nailed your job. You're doing really well. Would you say you, you know, you know what you're doing, right? And I'd say yes. And then if they said, well, great, now that you, uh, you're really nailing it, we're just going to stop paying you. I'd be like, <laughs> all right, well, here's the thing. I don't work for free. So if, you know, they've got their own things that they want to do. Dogs have all these, I mean, senses that just outweigh ours exponentially. And they have all these different drives and needs to fulfill. And so I need to make it worth it to do my thing over their thing. And so why wouldn't I keep paying my dogs as they get better and better, right? Usually you get a raise for that, not a, not a decrease in pay. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Uh, well, that's a great tip. So uh, uh, thanks for being on the podcast and we look forward to having you back. Of course. It was super fun. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.